we thank God for providing this opportunity again that we can fellowship through the sharing of his word. And so we yield and we submit our lives into his hands in this program that he will speak into our hearts, trusting in him, trusting that the Holy Spirit will open up our eyes that we may receive uh, the wondrous things in his word. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Sakayongeno. Love, I love the Lord and I treasure to serve him in my lifetime. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise and the glory. Father, because you have given us this chance again, O oh God, we pray and submit our lives into your hands, O oh God. We pray, Almighty God, that you will open the eyes of our understanding, that, O oh God of glory, we shall receive of you, our God. We shall hear you speak unto our hearts. We thank you, Almighty God. We give you glory and the praise and the adoration that you will bless the listener, the viewer, and use my life, use us as we broadcast this program. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I want to read from the book of Acts chapter 1, that passage that I'm very sure that you, like myself, have read it uh, a number of times. Acts chapter 1 from verse 1. The former traitors, traitors have I made all Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 12. Then they returned unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Selotes and Judas the brother of James. This all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> yes, so as I said, this is a passage that 
we, you must have read uh, a number of times. The vessel that was used by the Holy Spirit to put down these truths in the book of Acts, as we know, is Luke, the, the servant of God that was called Luke. And he's writing and saying, the former traitors, have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began to teach and to, to do and to teach. He's giving an account. He is saying that he had given an account before uh, in the Gospel of Luke, and he's continuing from there, that of all that Jesus began to do and to teach. So this is a record now of the Acts of the Apostles after Jesus ascended. And the Bible is saying that until the day in which he was taken up, after he had given a commandment to the apostles that he, has cho he had chosen, and the commandment which is put down here, after Jesus had shown himself for 40 days, 40 days after resurrection, he showed himself to several, the people, are listed in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Bible says he appeared to Peter, he appeared to James, he appeared to so and so, he appeared to this and that. He appeared to several after his resurrection. And those who are chosen to be witnesses of resurrection. Now, my focus is on the command and what they did uh, as far as the command was, was given to them. That is in verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Praise the Lord. That was uh, like the last command that he gave to the, the, the apostles before he ascended. The last command was that they were to wait in Jerusalem. They were to tarry in Jerusalem, waiting for the promise of the Father, which he had kept repeating to them and telling them, yes, John the Baptist baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So tarry in Jerusalem until you receive that power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. That was the last, uh, like the last instruction that Jesus gave to the apostles before ascending like the last command, the last commission that he gave to them. Praise the Lord. And he gave to everyone, I believe, everyone that, that he, he met after resurrection, after he rose from the dead. Every one of them he gave that promise. Tarry in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem. Because when you shall receive that power, when you shall receive the promise of the, the, the Father, when you shall be endued with power, you, that will equip you, that will empower you to be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. So they were to wait for that endowment of power, of spiritual power. They were to wait in expectation. They were to, to, to obey that instruction, that command, so that they would be endued with power. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, when we read in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, uh, let me just look at that portion where Paul is speaking about the resurrection. He's speaking about the full gospel, that Jesus Christ 
He was delivered up. He was crucified. He was buried. And he rose again. When he's referring to that, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when he's speaking about the resurrection, he says this, uh, verse 4. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Kephas, that is Peter, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also. So, Apostle Paul is giving a list of those to whom Jesus appeared after resurrection. I'm picking verse 6 out of those that he appeared to, which is mentioned in a large number, that he was seen of over 500 brethren at once. I believe they were gathered in a particular place and he appeared unto them. And I believe that this promise of the Father, he delivered to everyone that he met or that he showed himself to because they were to be witnesses. They were to be witnesses of his resurrection and they could only do that under the power of the Holy Spirit when they were empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses of his resurrection. To be witnesses of his resurrection. So, out of those over 500 uh, brethren, the Bible tells us that after Jesus ascended and they kept gazing, looking at him as he was ascending and disappearing into the clouds, going back to the Father, and two angels appeared to them, and they were asking them, why, do you, why are you gazing up? This same Jesus whom you have seen going up shall come back in the same way. That is a promise of the Lord's return. It is to tell us that Jesus will surely return. Uh, that, that is what, what the angel said. You men of Galilee, why are you standing gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. The same way you have seen him go into heaven, the same way he shall come. So that is one of the passages, by the way, that, that assures us of the Lord's return. Jesus is coming back and is coming back soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. But that is not uh, the focus of my sharing. The focus of my sharing is this, those who obeyed the instruction of the Lord. In verse 12, we are back in the book of Acts chapter 1. Then they returned unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So they returned from where they had seen the Lord rising up or going up into the, the going back to heaven. They returned from that place and when they came, they went into the upper room, the Bible says. And they, they, they make, made there like an abode, a, a, a habitation, a dwelling place, a, a place where they would dwell. They, they were gathered there and the list of the apostles is given there together with the women, together with the Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren, they're listed among those 120 that obeyed the commission of the Lord, the last instruction they were given to wait for the promise of the Father, the promise of the Father. You see, this is a promise. In the, in, in the Word of God, in the Word of God, when, when we are making prayer, we have to stand by a promise, a promise 
we, we have to catch a promise that God has made and cling to that promise and pray upon that promise. Praise the Lord. Pray upon that promise. The, the, the same Apostle Paul that we, we, we have mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, for example, he, he, he clung to the promises of God. When the Lord appeared to him, the Lord had said, I'm sending you to the Gentiles and I will deliver you from them. And we know that Apostle Paul went through so much persecution, stoning, even to the point of death. His life was hunted by, by his fellow Jews. By, but he clung to the promise that God had promised from the beginning that he will deliver them. He will deliver him from all those enemies. He will deliver him. He was clinging to a promise. So even when he is writing letters to the churches, he's telling them, pray with me that I shall be delivered from those who don't believe. I shall be delivered from them. He's standing by a promise that the Father had given unto him at the beginning of his ministry. Praise the Lord. So our prayers should stand by the promises of God. God has promised this. He cannot lie. He is not a man to change his mind. We cling by his promise. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this 120, they clung to the promise that the promise of the Father that God would pour out his spirit upon them. They will be endued with power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them. They stayed on that promise. And so they went to the upper room. And verse 14 is saying they, all of them, they continued with one accord. All of them were in one agreement, one mind, one mind. They are all waiting on the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. No one there had another agenda among the 120. Their agenda was the, the Lord has given us a promise that we wait on the promise of the Father. And they continued in that one agenda, praying to God in one accord and making supplication with all the women. Praise God. Amen. And they stood by that promise. And as we know, uh, they, they must have also been just checking up their lives, correcting their ways, make, to make a highway for that river of the Holy Spirit, for that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They must have been checking their lives, checking out their relationships, how, what is their attitude towards one another? What are their feelings? If there are any ill feelings about each other, they must have taken time to correct. They must have taken time to sort them out, to sort them out until they got to the point they, where they were all of one accord, all of one mind, all in one place. It was not just a physical gathering as we know. It was more than a physical assembly of 120 people. It was a people that were of one accord. When God looked at, looked at them from heaven, it was like one person. It was like one person because they were of one mind, one accord, one spirit, one love, one love. That is, that is the point they reached. That is a high point that they reached in their preparation. And so the Bible tells us in chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that is the time now for the Holy Spirit to be poured out. When that day was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord in one place. Praise the Lord. That was the preparation they needed. Amen. Um, my, my sharing is, is, is um, I want to just review and, and 
and remind us that the, the issue of a remnant, the issue of a remnant, picking from that 120, as we, we have said this before, but it's something worth reminding ourselves because it's our goal. It is a main vision in, in the end time church for the church to come to a glorious place, for the church to come to a place where she shall be glorious. She shall be radiating with power, with light, with truth. Where she shall be doing all that, she must receive power from above. Amen. She must be restored to a place where they are like, where we are like the early church in the name of Jesus. So I, I, I'm just sharing uh, about the, the remnant that remained, 120. If you look at it in terms of percentage, maybe there were just about 20% of those that were given the promise. If we say they were about, above 500, as the scripture says, if we use 500 and 120, you can see that is about 20% or 20-something percent of all those that received the promise, but only 20% obeyed. And so I, I'm using that as a remnant. There are many other examples in the Bible where only a remnant were met the conditions. Only a remnant were obedient, fully obedient, fully obedient to the instruction that they were given by the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that is one item. We want to look in the Bible uh, some of the verses that speak about remnant. That speak about, I would like to read a few of them in Jesus' name. Uh, le let me read the one in, in the book of Zephaniah chapter 3. There, there, there are many of them. Uh, let me read Savannah chapter 3. I think it's verse 13. Savannah is that small book just behind Zechariah, behind Haggai. Chapter 3, verse 13. It's also a passage that is speaking about restoration, the promise of restoration. The promise that the church shall be restored. There shall be a restoration. The church shall be restored. Joel chapter 2. Many passages. I shall restore unto you the years that have been taken up or eaten up by the locust, by the kanga worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. I shall restore unto you. So this passage in Savannah is also speaking about restoration. Revival is a restoration. Praise the Lord. The church being restored to its place and being lifted up from there. Being lifted up from there. Being lifted up. So chapter 3 verse 13. It says, verse 12 says, I will also leave in the midst of thee, an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. They shall trust in the name of the Lord. Verse 13, the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall deceitful, shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. It's something speaking about the restoration of Israel. And we know that Israel in the Old Testament is a picture of Israel in the New Testament, which is the church. And so what was done to Israel uh, in the Old Testament, what was done to them shall be replayed in the church. I believe it with all my heart in Jesus' name. And the Bible is saying, this remnant shall not do iniquity. In other words, they shall be a holy people. They shall be a holy, righteous people. And we know revival, one of its aim and its purposes is to lift the level of righteousness. 
We have referred to that scripture in, in Hosea chapter 10, which speaks of revival as a reign of righteousness. A reign of righteousness. A revival of righteousness. It shall be a revival of righteousness. So one of the things that shall mark the remnant that are to receive this revival, that are to, to cause this revival to be birthed, is that they shall do no iniquity. They shall be like the remnant we are reading about here in Sephaniah. They shall do no iniquity, nor speak lies, nor neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. Praise the Lord. These are things that must mark us as we await the promise of revival. Like the early church, those 120 were waiting for the promise. What they were doing about their lives was to get rid of iniquity, any lies among them, and uh, a deceitful tongue. If they had not dealt with lies in their lives, they would not have been able to address people like Ananias and Sapphira, who came among them pretending to be part of them. But as we know that when Peter spoke under the power of the Holy Spirit, he could discern they were lying. They were lying. And God could not have, have witnessed. I am tempted to read that verse in Malachi. Could not have witnessed for them that there was no liar among them. I, I, let me just read that verse as, as I say what I'm saying about holiness in the remnant. Malachi chapter 3 is saying, chapter 3 is, is also speaking about uh, purity. Uh, let me read. Reading the Bible and staying within the word is the securest way to preach the truth. To stay within the word. Stay within the perimeters of the word of God. Praise God. So Malachi chapter 3. This is speaking about the Lord sitting in his house as a refiner. Malachi chapter 3 verse 2. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he shall be like a refiner's fire. And like a fuller's soap. That is, a, a fuller is, a, is someone like a laundry. It, washing, washing with soap, with detergent. The Lord shall be like a refiner's fire to refine his people. He shall be like a fuller's soap, a, a launderer's soap. Soap to wash his people, to cleanse his people in the name of Jesus. Verse 3, and he shall sit as a refiner, and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and patch them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Verse 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old. You see, it's, it's referring to the days of old, a restoration of the days of old as in the days of old and as in former years. After he has refined his people, he has sanctified his people, he has purified the sons of Levi, then they can now minister unto the Lord in righteousness. We are talking of a revival of righteousness, a reign of righteousness. Praise the Lord. So one of the things that will mark the remnant that are to to engender this revival, that are to cause this revival to be birthed and to be spread, one of the things that shall mark them are a people that are seeking holiness, righteousness, amen, godliness, godliness which profits in all occasions, profits in this life, in the life to come in all ways. Praise the Lord, amen. So, uh, it continues, I've not gotten to the place something about. Verse 5, and I will come near to you. Verse 5, I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against sorcerers and against adulterers 
and against false swearers. False swearers. We see, according to me, I see this scripture being fulfilled in Acts. Acts chapter 5, for example. You see, those, that people that were there, they had so sanctified their lives that God could witness against any, any liar among them. If anyone came among them who was a sorcerer, who was an adulterer, who was a false swearer like Ananias and, and Sapphira, God would come down to witness against them. It is a proof that the people that were there, they had sanctified their lives away from lies, away from false swearing. That is why God came down to witness against anyone who came among them with lies. Praise the Lord. If they were lukewarm people, compromised people, God would not have come down to show the sin of Ananias and Sapphira. Praise the Lord. So I'm talking about the remnant must be a people that are pure in heart in Jesus' name. As we have read in Sephaniah. There are people who, do, who shall do no iniquity. They shall not speak lies. They shall, uh, they shall not be any deceitful tongue in their mouth. Praise the Lord. These are the things to mark the remnant. We must study them so as to know the qualifications, where, the conditions that are necessary for us to receive the fulfillment of the promise like the early church. They met the conditions. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Holy Spirit was poured upon them. Praise the Lord. And Peter began to preach under power of the Holy Spirit right from day one. Right from day one. Praise the Lord. And he's telling the people, this same Jesus whom you crucified, this same Jesus whom you delivered to be crucified, this same Jesus, God the Father has exalted him and has made him both Lord and Christ. And because he has ascended to the right hand of the Father and he has received the promise, Peter is saying that in Acts chapter 2, he has received the promise of the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has received and he has poured out upon that vast group of 120. And he began to tell them, that is why you see this. You see them speaking in other tongues. You see them, you see this manifestation. It's because Jesus Christ has ascended to the right hand of the Father. He has received the promise that he told us about, the promise of the Father that he told us about. He has received and he has now poured upon us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We must thus, we must seek this, the fulfillment of the promise of revival in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. So I'm, I'm just mentioning a few of the conditions of the remnant, of the remnant in Jesus' name. I've mentioned they shall be obedient like that early 120. They obeyed the last commission. They stayed in the upper room. They waited in Jerusalem. They tarried in Jerusalem. They obeyed. Praise the Lord. So the same remnant uh, in this last day, they must be fully obedient to the Lord. They must obey the Lord. They must obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. Number two, I've said that they must be a people that are pure, holy, seeking righteousness. Praise the Lord, like we have read. They shall do no iniquity. They shall not speak any lies. There shall be no deceitful tongue in their mouth in the name of Jesus. I was remembering the testimony of that man of God who helped to birth, whose prayers helped to birth. That revival that happened over 100 years ago in, in one place in America called Azusa Street. Azusa Street. One time I sought to find out where it is. I, I just found it somewhere near this city called Los Angeles. Uh, and anyway, the, 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 that man of God 
who, by the way, had some Africanism in him. He was not fully white. But one of the things that marked him was he had a very strong prayer life, as, as we, we hear from his history, very strong prayer life. And he had a strong thirst. And the people who gathered around him were not many. We are talking about a remnant. A remnant. There were just a few people. But one of the things that marked them was they were thirsty for God. They were not satisfied. Sometimes in the church today, we feel like we have had enough. We, we, we have come to a place, I, 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 I cherish, I like to use that word, a, a plateau, a plateau, like the Yata plateau in our country. Or the, a place, uh, yes, you have risen. You are not on, the, on the, the, the level, the normal ground level. You have risen. A plateau is a high place. It has risen. But when you get there, you just flatten. You are no longer climbing up. You, like you have reached a flat, a flat place, plateau. So many of us in the church today, we are, we are just plateauing. We are no longer rising. We are no longer seeking depth with God. We are no longer seeking heights with God. We are no longer hung, thirsting for greater things in God. We, we have reached a plateau in a place where we have leveled off. That is not the way that this man of God, he was called William Seymour, as we read about him We're in, in that Azusa Street. But they were thirsty. There were just a few of them. They were thirsty. They were prayerful. I think it's, the history says that they, they, they were praying three times a day, seven days a week. If, if we think of the church today, I'm sure we would say not, not a big percentage of the church meets such a qualification. Praying three times a day in that small group, that small group on their knees most of the time, and seven days a week, all through the week. Sometimes we just gather on Sunday, and the Sunday we come with so many uh, agendas, plans already you have already planned, after church I will go this, after church I will go this. Just a few uh, hours, two hours or three hours. So we can see that we have ground to cover. We have places to go. In order to get to these qualifications, we, we, have, we have things to cover. We have ground to cover in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let that challenge us. If that is the way revival came in those days, it is no different today. It will not be cheaper today to get revival. It will not be cheaper. If it took them three times of, of prayer, seven days a week, it cannot be any cheaper today. Praise the Lord. Amen. It has to cost us. I'm talking about the remnant. I'm talking about the remnant. That's why it is a remnant anyway. If it was... It was a cheap thing. Then all, everybody, then all, all the, the masses would, would be able to, to be ahead this revival. It is it's a remnant. And I'm speaking to you, dear viewer, that you are chosen to, among that remnant. I have spoken this before. I will speak it again in Jesus' name because it's needful. Praise God. They were on their knees and much of their prayers also had to do with repentance, had to do with cleansing their lives. Praise God. These are marks of the remnant. It's not good to just mention a remnant. It's better to tell us the details of the remnant in Jesus' holy name. Praise God. I'm closing in Jesus' name by encouraging you, dear viewer, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will aspire that your heart will develop a thirst, that you will cry to God for a thirst, create in me, O oh God. If David prayed for a clean heart, we can also pray for a thirsty heart. Create in me a heart that is thirsty, that is thirsty for the waters, for the rivers of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a thirsty heart. 
create in me an obedient heart in the name of Jesus. I want to qualify among the remnant. I'm encouraging you in the name of Jesus that you qualify. You meet those conditions in Jesus' name. Let me close with a word of prayer for ourselves in the name of Jesus. Our Father, you used the remnant, O oh God. Our Father, you found a people that would obey your command. You found a people, O oh God, that would so thirst and wait upon you, O oh God, tarry as you commanded them. You found a people, O oh God. You found a people, O oh God, that you, you would pour your spirit upon them. O oh God, our Father, when the Holy Spirit came, it came directly upon that 120 who had prepared, who had met the conditions. Hey, the Holy Spirit was not poured upon the whole world of that time. It was poured, the Holy Spirit was poured upon them that had prepared, them that had obeyed. O oh God of glory, we pray our Father, you are a God of a second time, a second chance. You have given us a second round, O oh God, our Father, to trust in you, O oh God, that you will revive your church, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray like the psalmist, O oh God, who said, turn us again, O oh God, restore us again, O oh God, come down upon us again, O oh God, visit us again, O oh God. We pray, our Father, that, Lord, you will turn us again, revive us again, restore us again, visit us again in the name of Jesus by pouring your Spirit upon us. Help us, O oh God, to meet those requirements, O oh God, to be obedient unto you, to be that people that are seeking after righteousness in the name of Jesus. O oh God, our Father, we pray that we shall thirst after your Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, that you shall help us, our Father, Help us, our God. We shall not stop at any point. We shall not plateau. We shall not level off. We shall keep climbing, keep climbing, keep ascending, O oh God, in, with the heights in God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the viewer. I pray for the view of this program, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we shall be among the remnant, O oh God. In the I pray you attend to the need, O oh God. Those pressing needs, O oh God. Pressing family needs, O oh God. Pressing financial needs, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will provide our Father, even for children that are due to return to school this coming week. In the name of Jesus, provide for the viewer. Provide our Father. In the name of Jesus, O oh God of glory, heal the sick, O oh God, that will listen to, that will listen to this program. Heal them, O oh God. Cause them to rise out of their beds. In the name of Jesus, let healing accompany the preaching of your word. Let signs and wonders, O oh God, accompany our Father, even as you promised, O oh God. We thank you, our Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for hearing us, even in this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you, dear viewer, in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in. And I want to give you an opportunity if you are not born again, you have listened to this little sharing and you feel your heart, you want to open to Jesus and you feel this is a moment. Let me lead you in a prayer of repentance. Just repeat this prayer and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you that you laid down your life, oh God, at Calvary for my sake. You shed out your precious blood that I may be saved. Thank you for such great love. Today I come to you knowing I cannot save myself. I need a savior. I need you savior. I pray you forgive all my sin. I repent of my sin. Wash me with your precious blood and come into my heart. Be my Lord and savior. I thank you Lord Jesus for saving my soul. And I ask you to lead me from this day forward. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. We have prayed that prayer. I give you the assurance of the word of God that you are born again. You are a child of God. You have been given the right to become a child of God. So seek out a church in your vicinity and may you go there and grow among other believers in Jesus' name. God bless you again. Thank you for tuning in. Amen.